It's an exciting time. The New Horizons space probe is flying past Pluto and the astronomers are wild with excitement. New canyons, all sorts of things on Pluto. But I'm excited for a different reason. Because New Horizons is carrying plutonium. So the element plutonium is going to the planet Pluto. How much better can you get than that? The three elements, uranium, neptunium and plutonium, were named after the three planets. In those days, Pluto was still considered to be a planet. So uranium had been called uranium for a long time. And when they discovered the new elements 93 and 94, it was natural to call them after Neptune and Pluto. The reason why the New Horizons has plutonium on it is because they need energy. Usually spacecraft that are near the Earth or even a bit further away on Mars have large arrays of solar panels, like the PV panels that some people have on their houses, but of course much lighter and more efficient. And they just use the sunlight to generate electricity. But when you get to Pluto, it's far too far away from the sun to get useful amounts of light. In fact, if you stood on Pluto, the sun would just look like a rather large star. You wouldn't notice the sunlight at all, or very little. So you need some other sorts yeah, of energy. And liftoff of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft on a decade-long voyage to visit the planet Pluto and then beyond. By far the most weight-effective energy source are radioactive sources. As you know, the most powerful bombs are nuclear bombs, where you release all the energy in a fraction, a tiny fraction of a second. Plutonium is used on spacecraft to release the thermal energy that comes from radioactive decay. You have a lump, or a series of pieces, of the isotope of plutonium plutonium-238. This is not the same isotope that is used for nuclear weapons, but it is one that decays at a rather slower rate spontaneously. You don't need neutrons to set it off and to get a chain reaction. And it decays with a half-life of 87.7 years. So it slowly decays away. But if you have a lump of this material, quite a sizable lump, the energy it's producing heats it up till it's nearly red hot. And then you can surround it by thermocouples, which will convert the thermal energy, the heat energy, into electricity or to electrical energy. How do you just turn heat into pure electrical energy? Well, people are quite or often familiar with thermocouples that are used to measure temperature, where you have two different metals um, in contact. And when you heat them up, you generate a small voltage, which is usually put onto some sort of digital display that shows the temperature. However, if you have thick wires, you can generate quite a reasonable current. And if you have lots of these thermocouples, arranged in suitably, you can generate a reasonable voltage as well. So just the pure heat is shunting electrons along the wires? Yes. The energy that they get out for the um, New Horizons, they have 10.9 kilos of plutonium. That's quite a serious amount of plutonium. Of course, it's a different isotope, but it's nearly twice as much as the plutonium that was in the atom bomb that destroyed Nagasaki. So it's a serious amount of plutonium. This 10.9 kilos is producing about 280 watts, which is enough to light a couple of powerful light bulbs of the old sort, and is enough to power everything on the spacecraft. The plutonium is decaying all the time. So it's taken nine or nearly 10 years for New Horizons to get to Pluto. And during that time, 
the power will have decayed because there is less heat coming out of the plutonium. But there's still enough to power all the instruments. In fact, there was a delay launching the New Horizons, and that also made the power pack lose some of its power. If it had been on time, they would have had considerably more power. But they have very clever power management um, techniques. So all being well, there's enough to get the great pictures back that we're looking forward to. The power pack, I think, is quite big and is very carefully constructed. The plutonium is in the form of plutonium oxide, which is surrounded by iridium, which is the metal that has almost the highest melting point of any metal. And then that is again surrounded by graphite, and the whole thing then is put in contact with the thermocouples. It weighs quite a large amount, but in terms of kilowatt hours per kilo of weight, it is fantastically better than, say, using petrol or gasoline to power the satellite. So it's a very high energy density. The triumph for chemistry, is it? Well, I think physicists would claim that it was nuclear power, so it was really theirs. But what I really like is plutonium going to Pluto. Now, obviously, we don't have any plutonium here. You may have seen our videos just to go in and look at a few milligrams we had to dress up all specially. However, I do have my plutonium coffee mat. And in this test tube here, I have a soft drink which calls itself plutonium. And what is important to say is that if this was really plutonium-238 oxide, this test tube would be too hot to touch. Plutonium-238 is made synthetically. It is made from uranium, which is turned into neptunium, element 93. And that element 93 then decays into plutonium-238. It decays up? Yes. It decays up because it, there is a beta decay, an emission of an electron, which essentially is a neutron turning into a proton. It's quite a difficult process to do, and you need a very special reactor to, to convert uranium to neptunium and then get the final stage. It used to be manufactured in the United States. They've now stopped. And the US space program bought some plutonium-238 from Russia. But now, even those stocks are running out. And we're talking about really small amounts of this material, 20 kilos, something like that. So as far as I know, there is some plutonium-238 available in the States for the next Mars rover, because for these Mars rovers, the vehicles that go around Mars, you can't really power them with solar panels because you'd need huge solar panels to get enough power. And so it really would not be able to drag all these things behind them. But there is a shortage. And there's a question. It's very expensive to make this plutonium-238. And in the current time of tight budgets, it's been decided it's not economic to do it. Professor, I can imagine if an element was named after a person who was later disgraced on an international scale, that IUPAC would consider changing the name of the element. Yeah. I think they would do that. Yes. Do you think there's a case to be made for changing the name of plutonium? Because it was named after a grand planet and the planet was famously demoted, does that mean we should demote the element name too? Definitely not, because it's not Pluto's fault that we've changed the definition. It hasn't misbehaved, hasn't thrown rocks at the Earth or anything like that. And no, I think it's many people think Pluto's been pretty hard done by. There'd be uproar if plutonium was renamed. And anyway, then there'd be big arguments what we should call it. I think I'm very happy with the name, and your suggestion is rubbish. <laughs> I think Pluto should still be a planet. Yes.